So it's finally time to get the turbo onto the replacement engine here. So you can see that there are already a few of the turbo lines that are on there, but I think I might have to remove them because the hybrid already has most of these, or all of them actually, already attached. And what I didn't want to do was disturb the bolts that were on the turbo housing, which would mean getting new crush washers for them. Welcome back to the Barn Fine Desert Green Pearl Audi TT Roadster Restoration. In this huge update, I bought the turbo back, reassembled the clutch kit, gearbox, and finally the engine goes back into its home. What troubles do I come across? Watch on and you'll see. Having a few of the turbo oil and coolant lines already attached made this trickier to install than I thought. You can see there was actually a lot of moving and jiggling it around in order to get the mounting points to line up. As soon as I figured out how to hold the turbo to get the block to turbo brace aligned, I screwed in the two mounting bolts. These have specific torque specs which I'll add into the description below. I first mounted the turbo up by these two bolts, then I bolted in the coolant line brackets into the block. These would be really hard to get to while the engine was in the engine bay, so I'm making sure they're all in while I have really easy access. Lining up the mount points to the block was a simple part. What started tripping me up was lining up the coolant line to the block and the oil return pipe. They were a little bit out of position, so I had to get creative in getting these to line up. Now that the turbo lines are sorted, I can bolt the turbo to the manifold. This requires a new gasket and proper torquing down of the three manifold to turbo nuts. These are usually three E14 bolts, but the Franken turbo kit must have come with a stud and nut setup, which I'm hoping helps to clamp the turbo down stronger than usual. Sorting out some of the coolant system now, I have the metal coolant fittings kit, so I need to transfer the coolant temperature sensor over. The new o-ring is really thick, and to ensure it's clamped down properly, you want the plastic clip to hold the sensor down by installing it over the brass ridge. Once you have it started, you can wiggle the sensor and the clip kind of installs itself as you can see. Moving on to the spark plugs, I have gone with the NGK BKR7E plugs which are highly recommended on tuned 1.8T setups. I've never adjusted the gap on these and I just install them as is. I'm always careful not to just drop them in and use my magnet tool to place them into the bore and start them on their threads. The oil cap extension can get in the way so I just remove that for when I'm ready to torque the spark plugs down. Turbo is back on, just going to and I think I'll take it off the engine stand to then install the clutch and get the gearbox on. But so far it's looking good. Starting to get exciting now. So when installing the clutch kit, you'll need to prevent the crank from spinning. I like to jam it with a breaker bar that pushes on the ground or on the crane leg as it wants to rotate counterclockwise. With the crank set up, the gearbox space plate needs to go on before fitting the flywheel. New bolts need to be used here and they're torqued down to spec plus an extra 90 degrees.
I like to use a paint pen to mark the initial torquing down of the bolts, then I'm able to tell which ones have been given the extra 90 degrees. So you can see that my flywheel has some surface rust and I'm not sure if that's going to affect anything negatively but I think it'll be fine. If anyone has any experience with a slightly rusted flywheels, let me know in the comments below. Here is the super sexy looking clutch plate. So it's a ringer racing stage 3 clutch where the flywheel side appears to be the usual material and the pressure plate side a ceramic surface. I like to loosely install the pressure plate first and then check that the clutch disc is centered with some small adjustments before tightening the pressure plate bolts down. These all need to be renewed as well. Finally, add a coating of grease to the teeth of the clutch plate. Now it's time to get the gearbox on. I managed to get the gearbox lined up to the clutch by myself, which was great, but needed some help for the final wiggling of the gearbox to get the bolt holes to line up and started in their threads. A big tip here is that the gearbox should easily push onto and touch the block. If there's resistance or the bolt holes don't line up, you don't want to force it on. I always try to get two bolts mostly threaded on by hand before installing the rest of the bolts and torquing them down. So here are the torque specs for the 4-cylinder O2M gearbox and I've also listed them down in the description below. Don't forget the bolt that faces the gearbox. This one will be impossible to get once the transfer case is on. Next is replacing the O-rings for the transfer case or bevel box. Now the gearbox can be removed as one with this still attached, meaning you don't have to replace the O-rings, but I find it's much easier to remove the gearbox from the block without the bevel box on. When reinstalling the bevel box, it should push on with ease and if it doesn't, that means the splines aren't aligned and you want to pull it out and rotate the unit slightly so that it does push on most of the way very easily. Installing the bolts is a pain because of the clearances, so you need to get creative with the tools you've got and the small spaces. You'll also notice there's no direct access to one of the bolts close to the block, that's the most annoying one. So I just had to keep trying with different combinations of tools and bits and I guess you just have to work out something that works for you. What I ended up doing was using one of my Allen key bits along with a ratcheting spanner to get most of the bolts in. Once they were threaded in enough I was able to get a ratchet in there to do the final tightening. To tighten up the hidden bolt inside the drive shaft flange, I like to jam a screwdriver through one of the holes to stop its movement.
I have this really chunky bevel box bracket which just fits on. Now I've never seen this version of the bracket before so I'm interested to know who else has this kind. I find the black version of this has a much slimmer profile and is way way easier to install and remove. Now once that's in place the mounting bolt can be tightened up and that's the gearbox installed. Gearbox is on. Bevel box is on as well. That was really annoying. I forgot how annoying this is because the bolts just are really hard to access. But that's on. And mounts are good to go. So it's pretty much ready to be put back into the car. Okay, so I can't believe it's finally time to get the engine back into the engine bay. This is super exciting. Now, I always take my time to ensure all the things line up. I always check these points throughout the installation to make sure nothing is damaged along the way. So I like to check the engine mount side, the transmission mount side, bevel box to prop shaft alignment, and the downpipe alignment to the turbo. So thanks for watching everyone, this is such a huge milestone and thanks for keeping up with the updates for the Desert Green Pearl Barnfine TT. Click the links to see all the progress videos so far and remember to like and subscribe to see all future updates and I'll see you next time.